We are about to record a video. Oh, it's rolling. Welcome everyone to the video that will attempt to convince you to get out and practice so that you actually learn how to manual after years of telling yourself that you would, but you just kind of ended up watching lots of videos, tried a couple times, and decided manuals just aren't for you. Oh. The truth is, anyone can manual, but it takes time. Rome wasn't built in two minutes of failed attempts and you're not going to manual without a bit of effort. But if we break things down, set out a plan, make it fun, you'll progress and find yourself cruising along in that back wheel. Before taking on the manual, I recommend getting familiar with the wheelie as it's an easier skill and the lessons learned transfer to the manual. Watch the previous episode to get that one dialed. The last thing before we begin, you have to accept that all of the other videos you have watched have explained it already. I'm not gonna add anything new or groundbreaking here. The hardest thing, the, the hardest thing is getting started. Every episode in this series, I refer back to episode one and the process for learning. Commit to learning the skill, set out the plan, practice regularly with intention, and you will learn. Let's do this. <laughs> Step one, as with the wheelie, you want to make sure your rear brake works. But this time, instead of having your seat up, you wanna slam that sucker all the way down to give you room to move. Bike selection does make a difference. The smaller, lighter, and shorter travel the bike, the easier it will be to initiate a manual. It won't necessarily be easier to hold a manual, but it'll take less energy to practice. Pick the bike that makes things easiest, but you can do this on a downhill bike. It'll just be more tiring to practice. Step two, let's go step by step and really build this technique up from the ground. It begins with the front wheel lift. We don't want to try and loft things into a full on manual yet. You just want to practice a nice, even and controlled lift with no side to side imbalance. To do this, you should roll along just above walking pace, stood up out of the saddle in the boss stance. A slight downward slope can help, but flat ground works too. To lift the front, you want to sharply compress the front suspension or just the tire if you're on a rigid bike. Focus on pushing the bars down into the ground rather than pulling the front end up off the ground. As the tire or suspension rebounds and your arms lock out, the front wheel will lift slightly. You never pull and bend your arms. It raises your center of gravity too much when manualing and it's actually illegal. Don't risk it. Freeze. Oh, sorry officer. <laughs> when compressing the front end, make sure to focus on doing it evenly. Any imbalance will cause you to go squint when doing a full manual. So right now, sharply pushing down the bars is only lifting the front wheel just a tiny bit. To get it to come up further, you need to add a rearward weight shift. Step three, push the bike forwards as you compress the front end to help the front wheel raise up more. You do this by moving slightly forward before you do the same compression as before then push yourself back away from the front of the bike. Because the bike is pivoting around the rear wheel, the shift backwards of your center of mass takes the weight off the front end, allowing it to come up further. Practice this until you feel like you can lift the front end to a decent height in a balanced and controlled way. The front wheel should be about a foot off the ground at this point. It's still not enough for a true manual though. Step four get the legs involved. To really loft the front end, you need to get your weight lower and further back. To do this, you want to drop down into the bike before pushing it forwards like you did in the last step. This will allow you to put more energy into the front wheel lift and move your weight further back to get that front wheel all the way up. It can be really tricky to get the timing right for this. I try and break it down into two moves. Think about trying to sharply squish your front and rear suspension. Do that a few times. Drop down, sharply push back up. Drop down, sharply push back up. And then drop down with the same intensity and push the bike forwards with the arms. The legs stay bent and the heels stay dropped. This is really important. If you straighten the legs, it limits how far you can get back with the hips. To get a feel for where you should end up, you can hover your bum over your back wheel and try to think about dropping and then pushing yourself back into that position. Step five, before you do that, learn the safety net. If you've been practicing the wheelie, like you definitely already have, yeah, done that, right, sweet. You'll be familiar with the rear brake control to bring that front wheel back down. To practice this, do some nice balanced front wheel lifts and before you get to the balance point, brake to bring that front wheel back down. 
Don't get ahead of yourself and try and do a full manual yet. Get super familiar with controlling the descent of that front wheel using that back brake. Aim to breathe it smoothly back down to the ground. Step six, conquer the looping out fear by jumping off the back. You will overshoot a manual and loop out when practicing this. So you have to have the muscle memory to jump off the back. <laughs> you should never really need to do it with good brake control, but sometimes the back brake has an issue, so it's useful to have a backup plan. Unlike the wheelie, you jump off with both feet at the same time. This is because if you try and do it with one foot, the other pedal will rotate away from you, giving you a really unstable platform to push off. Push off with both feet at the same time to keep things nice and stable and land stood up or running if you're going faster. This is very scary to commit to, so you can try it on softer ground to keep that bum safe. <laughs> Step seven, you have all the ingredients now. Balance front wheel lift, movement ending in that bent leg, straight arm, weight back position, and that rear brake control. That's manual. So do the same movement as before when practicing jumping off the back and try to get to that tipping point where it feels like you're going to loop out. Use the back brake to bring the front wheel back down. Keep doing this until you get comfy and familiar with where that balance point is. Remember, straight arms, bent legs, bum over the back wheel. Use your phone to check this is all happening correctly. Start to be more and more gentle with the back brake so that you are braking just enough to hold that balance point for a little bit. This is one of the hardest bits of the manualing process. You'll probably get to this point quite quickly, but it takes some repetition and dedication to keep going and get comfy with it. Step eight, keep it going. So you're at that balance point now, you've controlled the braking, and now this is the point in the wheelie that you would then pedal to stop that front wheel from dropping. You can't pedal. Well, I mean, you can, but that's a wheelie, not a manual. To keep a manual up, you can push your hips back to move your center of gravity behind your rear axle, causing your bike and body to rotate backwards around your rear wheel, which lifts your front wheel higher. The converse is true. If you bring your hips forward, it moves your center of gravity in front of the rear axle, causing the bike and body to rotate forward and your front wheel to drop. With enough practice, you can then keep this balance point without even needing the back brake. Balancing purely with hip movement. I'm too old and stiff, I can't jiggle them. Step nine, side to side balance. Now, this isn't steering, this is the act of trying not to tip over sideways. I'll cover steering in another episode in the future as it's a whole subject in itself. Side to side balance is mainly done with your knees. Like your hips moving back and forward to maintain front to back balance, the left and right knees can be angled out to maintain side to side balance. Left knee to lean left, right knee to lean right. You can also use your wheel and you can actually steer in to the way that you're leaning and the gyroscopic effect of the wheel spinning can help to balance things as well. But if it stops spinning, then it stops working as well. So yeah, use your knees. Step 10, double digits. Do manuals everywhere. It's the only way to get good at them. Manual between markers, set distance goals, vary your speed, do them on boring bits of trail, do them between rollers, just manual everywhere. It's a tricky skill to master and you need to practice a lot. Make it fun. I learned to manual by trying to do them during the two mile ride to my local trails from my house and then all the way back again. Manual everywhere. This will probably be the most difficult skill a lot of you will learn. It can be scary and daunting, but my God, is it fun and satisfying when you crack it. Go on, commit to learning it, get out, make it happen, document the process. Let us know how it goes by tagging at Pinkbike and hashtag how to bike. And let's try, start a little learning community that encourages people to get out there and learn new skills. Good luck, I'll see you in the next one. Manuals! Loves back wheel! They absolutely love I, I love front wheel, actually. Oh, Nose good. manuals. Actually, the, the, new, <laughs> the new hardest skill that you're ever going to learn. <laughs>